guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2021 Mercedes-Benz AMG GLE Coupe, courtesy of Mercedes-Benz of Hagerstown in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. This thing I can already tell is gonna be an absolute beast. A very unique vehicle and it just came out, so I definitely wanted to check this one out today. Ridiculous amount of power on this SUV, which of course you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here, along with everything else, of course, paddle shifters, braking, all that fun stuff. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. It said there will be two different configurations for the GLE Coupe. First one being the GLE 53 Coupe, which is the one we have today. That one starts at $76,500. And then there is going to be the GLE 63S Coupe. And pricing has not yet been announced for that one, actually. As of right now, the 53 Coupe is the only one out, as of this video, at least. But I will give you, though, the power numbers for each individual setup there. First one being the one we have today, being a 3-liter turbocharged inline 6-cylinder with EQ boost. Essentially, what that is is Mercedes-Benz's hybrid system. Kind of gets the acceleration going, adding 21 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque to the engine, providing a better acceleration acceleration and all that fun stuff but overall power numbers come in at 429 horsepower at 6100 rpm 384 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 1800 to 5800 rpm power sent to all four wheels through the formatic all-wheel drive system and that power is sent to the ground through an amg speed shift nine speed automatic with paddle shifters which again you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here but all in all zero to 60 time for this one that we have today comes in at approximately 5.2 seconds top speed 130 miles per hour or 155 miles per hour if you equip it with summer tires with mp PG numbers coming in at 18 in the city, 23 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. And there is an eco start stop system as well, meaning when you stopped at a red light or a stop sign, the engine will shut off automatically, helping you save a little bit of MPGs there. And if you wanted to turn that off, the button is located just where the engine start button is. You can actually turn that off if that does start to annoy you. But so then the other engine configuration, of course, belonging to the 63S is going to be a handcrafted four liter by turbo v8 with eq boost putting out 603 horsepower 5700 rpm 627 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 2500 to 4500 rpm sent to all four wheels once again through a nine speed automatic zero to 60 time on that one 3.7 seconds that is ridiculous top speed 174 miles per hour miles per gallon has not yet been announced again it's a little bit too early for that but all in all, before we do any kind of paddle shifter test or acceleration test in this one, I did want to mention there are some driving modes and conveniently that button to adjust those driving modes are actually located right there on the steering wheel. You just simply turn it to the left and to the right. And therefore that is going to give you different driving modes like comfort, sport, sport plus, sand, individual, race, and slippery, adjusting things like the shift points, throttle response, steering sensitivity, and suspension settings actually as well. So quite a bit it's going to adjust there, but having said that did just put it in sport driving mode think that's probably most appropriate for our road test here today and what do you guys say let me go ahead and hit a paddle shifter here and let's test out the paddle shifter reaction times do you want to see how quickly they react i have a feeling they'll be perfectly fine but as always let's go ahead and test out these paddle shifters all right you got a straight away here guys in three two one go oh oh my gosh wow Yep, they are lightning quick, without a doubt. My goodness, that acceleration. You can feel it in the pit of your stomach. That'll be our acceleration test as well, because that was amazing. Did not expect that at all. I know the numbers are pretty darn fast on paper, but dang, that felt good. Part of that is because of the EQ boost. It gives you instant torque, essentially, when you first hit the gas, and you can feel that. A lot of cars without that hybrid system with just a flat inline six cylinder or turbocharged inline six cylinder, you're not gonna get that instant acceleration like you do in the GLE here. So that was fun, man. That was that was nice. And so, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find massive 15.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.6 inch solid rear discs. And as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, although the numbers aren't out for it yet, it hasn't officially been tested. I'm gonna guess it's gonna come in at approximately 104 feet. And that's based off the AMG GLE SUV, as opposed to this being the GLE Coupe. So it's gonna come in 
pretty darn close to that, but dang, 104 feet is absolutely amazing. For reference, this particular vehicle has bigger front rotors than my Ford Mustang GT, which is equipped with Brembo brakes, but honestly, the brake you feel when it comes to this, it's absolutely amazing. Certainly no issues with bringing the GLE Coupe to a stop, instant braking in this thing. But so they're touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. It's all pretty standard for the course, but Mercedes-Benz really does a wonderful job with all their suspensions as well because the GLE Coupe also gives you an adaptive damping suspension, which essentially gives you the best of both worlds. It's not only going to monitor each shock absorber individually, soaking up the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but when you're going around the turns a little faster, it is gonna tighten up that suspension as well. Again, giving you the best of both worlds, but also the GLE Coupe comes with AMG's Ride Control Plus, AKA the air suspension. And so this is an adaptive air suspension, meaning when you're going at higher speeds, it is going to lower, increase increasing aerodynamics a little bit. And it's actually going to adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in as well. And in addition to that, there is also a button just behind the touchback controller where you can manually raise or lower the suspension as well. And you can actually raise it up to 2.2 inches manually if you knew perhaps you were going to be going off road or on some rocky terrain or something like that. So that is actually gonna be there for you as well. So that's pretty darn cool. But overall, the first thing I muttered to myself when I started driving this thing is the ride quality is absolutely amazing as expected whenever you have an adaptive damping suspension it always gets better and then when you add an air suspension to that it gets basically the very best you can possibly get and it is that it is certainly a very smooth ride in the GLE coupe so I'm certainly not disappointed there when it comes to the steering feel it has a very nice weight to it not as heavy as my Mustang but that's not expected but it does have a very nice weight to it especially since I put it in that sport driving mode and again the steering sensitivity is going to adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in so if you wanted a little looser feel simply put it in the comfort mode and then you got that so really again best of both worlds really catered to the individual driver, which is a good thing. As far as cabin noise goes, that is another thing I first noticed when I got in this one. A lot of times when I turn on the air conditioning, it's overpowering, really messing with the audio quality of my videos, quite honestly, sometimes. But in this one, the air conditioning is super quiet. That was another thing I did not expect. Perhaps one of the quietest air conditioning systems I've come across in my 500-ish test drives that I've done. It's absolutely amazing. I love it because of the audio quality, but I also love it because it is kind of a luxury-esque feature. So that is pretty cool there too. And actually, of course, to go along with that, Mercedes-Benz does take it one step further, offering an acoustic comfort package. That goes for $1,100, by the way, but that adds an acoustic laminated front window acoustic laminated front side glass, windshield and rear window are also infrared absorbing, protecting against the sun's rays. That's pretty cool. And it has some additional added sound insulation as well. So that package is there for you as well if you wanted the most serene, quiet cabin humanly possible. So that's pretty cool. But when it comes to visibility, perhaps this is the trade-off seeing as we are in a GLE coupe. If you were to go with the SUV version of this, you obviously are gonna get better visibility with the coupe version, the roof line is certainly tapered off in the back, so visibility is not going to be as optimal as you may want it to be. But having said that, every single car I have driven, it is something you do get used to. Really doesn't matter if you're in a Nissan 370Z or a Chevy Camaro. It is something you do ultimately get used to the more you drive it. So I'm not too worried about that. Also to go along with that, a head-up display is available for $1,100, assisting with visibility yet again. And heated windshield wipers are available for $200 as well, which is certainly useful if you live in a northern-ish state like Maryland or Pennsylvania, where I live, whatever the case. So ultimately, when it comes to performance, this thing is an absolute blast to drive. Let's do one more acceleration here just for fun. Then we'll make our way to the exterior of this one. Three, two, one, go. Oh my gosh. This is not a freaking, oh, this is wonderful, man. I love this. Let's get to the exterior of this one. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Mercedes-Benz AMG GLE Coupe finished in polar white in case anybody was curious about that exterior color but let's go ahead now and start up front on this one amg specific vertical bar front grille does come standard with amg badging found in the lower portion of the side there 
front air curtains can be found in the lower corners, helping direct air around that wheel and tire combination. You guys can see that right there. LED headlights do come standard along with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. Never have to worry about that. LED daytime running lights also coming with that as well. Active bending headlights. That is when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend. You're less likely to hit a deer or any kind of animal or even a person, I guess. Adaptive high beam assist also comes standard. You can get an illuminated star for an additional $400. That is an option if you wanted that. And there is an AMG night package that goes for $750. I wanted to mention essentially what that does is black out all of the chrome accents you are going to find throughout this one. So I did want to mention that as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the GLE coupe here and so of course you were looking at a four-door coupe design meaning the roof line is tapered off in the back there rear privacy glass comes standard across the board along with chrome window surrounds unless you go with that AMG night package and then you have black window surrounds which of course is what you were looking at right now do you have some turbo formatic fender badging up front there you guys can see that also illuminated running boards go for $650 it's a pretty cool option if you wanted to go that route when it comes to those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors with integrated turd signals and so they will be gloss black again though with the night package if you went that route soft closed doors go for 550 dollars. that's always an option i find pretty amusing on mercedes-benz and bmw for that matter as well take a look down at the wheel setup they are 21 inch amg specific twin five spoke alloy wheels they do actually come in a staggered fitment so i wanted to mention that meaning they will be wider in the back than they are in the front and of course mercedes does that for better grip enhanced acceleration better handling that kind of thing but on the flip side i guess you can't rotate the tires so that's really going to be the trade-off there but so then make your way to the back of the gle coupe led high mount stoplight comes standard of course integrated rear spoiler led taillights you do have some AMG badging found at the bottom left hand corner of that rear lift gate there. Also a matte black rear diffuser. It looks like an absolute beast down there. That is pretty cool with aluminum upper trim accents as well. Again, if you were to go with the standard configuration, the AMG night package is going to make that gloss black, of course. And just below it all, dual exhaust outlets with quad chrome tips or black tips in our case. And I did want to mention there is an AMG performance exhaust package. It goes for $1,250 that we indeed do happen to have here today. So without further ado, I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the GLE Coupe, first I want to mention when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate as expected. There is actually a button on the key fob that is one way to go ahead and open up. There is a button back there on the actual lift gate itself that is yet another way. And it is a hands-free tailgate as well. Actually, you just simply kick your foot underneath the rear bumper in case your hands are full. So that is yet another way to go about opening that one up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 44.8 cubic feet behind that second row. If that wasn't enough space, those rear seats do fold down, bumping it up to an even 68 cubic feet. And there's also a retractable cargo cover back there. There's some in-floor storage along with your spare tire found underneath of the cargo floor. It's actually some tie-down hooks back there. There's grocery hooks. There's a 12-volt power outlet. So just about everything you could possibly want in a cargo area is going to be there in the back of the GLE Coupe. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, there actually are no numbers yet published for the rear legroom. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. So actually I was able to fit perfectly fine. So anybody else is six feet tall or under, you will fit perfectly fine here. So I did want to mention that. Also those rear passengers will find a rear center armrest with cup holders as expected. There is some rear ventilation for those rear passengers, AMG floor mats, which I found were pretty cool. Heated second row seats are available for an additional $580 if you wanted that. You do of course have some charging ports and storage just 
below the rear climate control back there as well. And I did want to mention there is optional four zone climate control that goes for $860 where both rear passengers can set their own temperatures as well. And there's a 115 volt power outlet actually back there as well. I did want to mention that because that actually allows guys to charge up their tools or girls to charge up their hair straighteners or whatever the case. So that's going to be back there too. I found that pretty cool. So then make our way now to the front seats. Eight-way power adjustable driver and passenger seats come standard with four-way power lumbar and memory settings for up to three different drivers found on both the driver and passenger side doors, so meaning the passengers can set their own seating positions as well. You don't always find that, so I did want to mention that. Heated front seats coming standard on the GLE Coupe. Ventilated front seats are optional for an additional $450. Multi-contour front seats with the massage function goes for $1,100, so it's always nice getting a massage on your way home from work, right? Warmth and comfort package goes for $1,050. I wanted to mention that because that gives you rapid heating front seats, super fast heating front seats, along with heated front armrest and upper door panel. So when you're resting your arm, when you're driving there as well, that is pretty darn cool. I like that Mercedes-Benz does that. You don't, you almost never see that. Anyway, so that's an option. As far as the seat comfort goes, it's perfectly fine. We do have the AMG suede leather combination today. And again, they are perfectly comfortable. Headrests are like freaking pillows. They're absolutely amazing. I've been emphasizing headrests lately because a lot of times they're super firm in some manufacturers. But of course, as expected in Mercedes, they're like freaking pillows. They're absolutely amazing. So definitely comfortable seats, I will say that. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is power adjustable tilt and telescoping. It is heated for an additional $250 and there is an optional steering wheel available that we do indeed have here today, being the AMG flat bottom steering wheel, which is going to be a combination of Napa leather and Dynamica finishes. So the Dynamica is on the left and the right, the Napa leather is on the top of the bottom and it's bolstered perfectly fine. I actually love the steering wheel. It feels like you're in a race car, but you're in essentially an SUV more or less so absolutely love that as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup on the GLE coupe and let me start by showing you guys the key here because this is a pretty sweet AMG key here it does have a nice weight to it you have lock unlock and the button to pop the rear hatch but essentially it is all keyless entry so simply just leave the key in your pocket there is a remote start available through the Mercedes me mobile app so that's how you're gonna get that Otherwise, there is a push button start just by the driver's right knee. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. And so, but once started up, there of course is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, which is completely customizable by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side of the steering wheel there. You can of course check out a bunch of different information, including your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your trip A, trip B, also your radio settings. But perhaps my favorite part is going to be the tab titled designs and display, because this is where you can completely customize the look of that digital display and that's one of the beauties of having a digital gauge cluster you could put it on super sport which is what i left it on my drive today there's also understated where it's a very minimalist design to the gauges then there's also classic and sport as well so a ton of different configurations you can really choose to put on the digital gauge cluster. It's absolutely amazing. I love that Mercedes-Benz does that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality where Mercedes-Benz always gets it right, of course. Panorama roof comes standard across the board. Love that, it's not an option, it comes standard. Black Dynamica headliner goes for $1,600. It's available if you want it. There is a universal garage door opener that comes standard. You do have your choice of either black or red seat belts as well. It is a free option, it's just one of those things. You just got to make the decision and you get it dual zone climate control comes standard red contrast stitching throughout is the standard configuration although gray contrast stitching that you're looking at right now is available but here's one that i really like heated and cooled front cup holders is a 180 dollar option we do have that today which i absolutely love because we all know that problem inevitably arises as it quite often does for me so you could set whether it be heated or cold by simply just pressing one button in the middle there and that is going to leave your drinks either heated or cooled that is absolutely Absolutely amazing in my opinion but 
Air balance package goes for $350. Wanted to mention that because that gives you a cabin air purification system if you have allergies and a cabin fragrance system actually as well, which is pretty cool. Wireless phone charger is located just in front of the cup holders. There's also a couple phone charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet up there as well. Then within the center armrest, you need another phone charging port. There is a place to actually put your cell phone, it appears, and a decent amount of storage in there as well. And so going back though to the cabin fragrance system, if you actually open up the passenger side glove box you will be able to see where they put that fragrance system in there it's in the upper left hand corner of the glove box and so once that starts to get low simply go to your mercedes dealership and they can replace it for you but that's going to be there too but again when it comes to overall interior quality mercedes always gets it 100 right my favorite part is always the ambient lighting mercedes-benz does ambient lighting better than any other manufacturer out there so it's going to look absolutely amazing at night kind of hard to show you guys during the daytime but that is going to be there for you as well it's completely customizable through the 12.3 inch digital tech display which we are now going to make our way over to so that tech display is a color touchscreen display by the way it can also be controlled by using the touchpad controller and buttons directly behind the cup holders there and it can be controlled through voice control as well all you need to do is simply say hey mercedes and then tell it what to do essentially. Bluetooth and audio streaming also comes standard Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You also get factory navigation system as well. Can of course check out your climate control settings up there. And perhaps my favorite part about Mercedes-Benz infotainment screen, there is a themes tab at the very bottom of that tech display, which completely changes the look and the interior of your Mercedes-Benz GLE Coupe. There's adventure, trip, lounge, standard, experience, and racetrack. And so for instance, when I put it in racetrack mode, not only does it activate that AMG performance exhaust system, but it completely changes the look of the gauge display along with a couple other changes as well. Then for instance, if I put it in experience mode, again, it alters the gauge display. It did then close the valves of the AMG performance exhaust system as well. So those are just two examples. There's plenty of other themes you can go with and I absolutely love that. BMW does something similar as well, but I do love that that is there. That is pretty darn cool in my opinion, but you can really check out just about everything you could possibly think up on that color touchscreen display, quite honestly, including the radio settings. And so now let's get to the sound system on this GLE Coupe. 13 speaker Burmester surround sound system is the standard setup across the board. 590 watts, nine channel digital amplifier, think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio here, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Definitely more than enough bass. That was pretty darn crazy, but plenty of clarity. Again, the bass was absolutely ridiculous. That sound system is pretty darn nice for the GLE Coupe, I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the GLE Coupe in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera, but not only that, but a 360 degree monitor comes standard as well, giving you an aerial view, letting you know who or what is behind you and all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. Also a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks do come standard, tire pressure monitoring system. Also though coming standard when it comes to advanced safety, that is going to include a driver attention monitoring system, blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, an active parking assist plus as well. That is one of the cool features about Mercedes-Benz. It actually lets you pick a parking spot Spot, not just parallel park, but pick a parking spot like at a shopping mall. And then it'll ask you if you want it to back in or pull in and essentially does all the steering, the pedal work, all of that for you. So you don't actually have to do anything. It's absolutely amazing. But driver assistance package plus goes for $1,950. That is going to include adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, evasive steering assist, active brake assist, automatic emergency braking, speed limit recognition, lane change assist, and route based speed adaptation. And so then Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the GLE Coupe, all those safety features I just mentioned in that package should be standard at this price point. That perhaps is my one constructive criticism for this one, but other than that, crazy amount of power for what this vehicle is, amazing braking, great sound system, wonderful ambient lighting. I always say Mercedes-Benz has the best ambient lighting of any other manufacturer out there. Very cool design to this one, although you do sacrifice visibility a little bit, but again, that's something you, of course, will get used to. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comments section below. That exhaust system was absolutely amazing on this as well. So many pluses. 
Anyways, again, let me know what you guys think of the GLE Coupe in the comments. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.